I lost my father when I was nine and it was devastating to say the least. He died of, a, he passed away of a heart attack. People ask me why I didn't shave in between starts. And my dad always had that, uh, that five o'clock uh, whiskers that he would tickle my belly when we'd watch uh, his favorite show was like Bonanza. My kids are growing up differently than I did, but anybody that runs into my boys, they'll see that they carry the name very well. I have four boys. Kobe's my oldest one, uh, K-O-B-Y. Uh, Corey's uh, my second son, second oldest, uh, K-O-R-Y. Of course, Casey's here, he's K-A-C-Y. And Cody's K-O-D-Y. My mom has trouble with all of us when we're around the house. She'll get us all mixed up. Kobe, Corey, I mean Cody, I mean Casey. And just yelling at us, that's kind of a struggle. Kobe's K-1, Corey's K-2, he's K-3, and I'm K-4. Yeah. So that's what we write on our clothes. I set the major league record uh, back in 1986. I struck out 20 Seattle Mariners and Kobe came along that year and we named him instead of C, we put a K in there for the Ks. My two older boys kind of bumped heads a little bit when they were young. The two younger, Casey and Cody, they were hand in hand. They got along, you know, they're in sync. We've had a couple games where both of us had really good games. Well, the Clemens have had quite a night, haven't they? Cody Clemens goes deep, and then big brother Casey does the same thing. Pretty cool to look in the box score, or the reports after the game, and, and see that both of us did well. Our parents definitely like to see that. You gotta understand, there's certain times at dinner where Casey's gone three for three with damage, and Cody's gone 0 for four. Boy, you're talking about needing Dr. Phil on speed dial. <laughs> Brings back great memories driving over to Dishfalk Field. You start seeing the fans and you know the burnt orange and get to see everybody and there'll be some tailgating going on and people hollering your nickname and stuff. It's a lot of fun. My dad's just happy we're on the same team so he doesn't have to go see four different games a week, different states. He just gets to come to one and he gets to come right here. If I don't get to see him because I'm driving up from Houston, I might um, send him a little text and usually the beginning of that text is the overall have fun and stay focused on what you're doing so focus and fun it seems to be the two things that always as a as a dad you know throw that at him all right let's go win a ball game we got these new field suites and they're right next to me at first base and they pack it in there with our whole family and my mom and seeing her and my dad and my grandmother supporting us all the time is, is awesome. And just peek over there and know that you have your family yeah. at the game. It's just a great feeling. Love you. Have a good one. Okay. Sir. Love you. Okay, have a good one. You'll see in games, we'll just make eye contact. The boys know me well enough that they'll make eye contact. Uh, the other night they looked over and everything was going great in the game, but I'm thinking with them. People ask me sometimes why I'm not smiling when they get a big hit, because I'm pretty much focused with them at the game because I'm going through the game and each out with the coaches and with you know the players. I say he's mutton. We he can get it down. Wow. Good butt, son. Good bunk, kid. What? He's basically our eyes. You know, this is what I see. I've seen a lot of great hitters before. You know, I faced King Griffey Jr. I faced a lot of really good hitters. Back to back breaking ball. It's good to have somebody like that who understands so much about the game to refer to and call and, and talk to whenever you need it. They bat boyed right there sitting on deck with Derek Jeter and Bernie Williams and uh, where Big Poppy's at and Jeff Bagwell, and the list goes on and on. They're right there bat boy, and they can hear, and, and they've, they've seen things that some of the kids will never see. I would say, if you talk to him, he's, he thinks that he's a good hitter, so he always talks to me. He'll give me a little, little insight about his days when he was having a bat, step in the box and face some guys. Now I kind of wish I'd come out of retirement again so Cody could actually see dad hit a couple times. I came close twice in my career to going deep. I think one was in Colorado and one was at Shea Stadium, so. But Cody's right, it's a good thing I stuck, uh, you know, worried about what was going on in the mound. 
one thing we always talk about is how we wish we were this, you know, our ages now when he was in his prime and when he was punching out 20 batters a game and, and winning Cy Youngs left and right. We wish we were able to see that and, and realize. Actually understand how, what was going right, on. How, how remarkable that really was. It's really cool that his name's up there. When I first got here, everything was kind of huge and like, oh my gosh, is this even real? The amount of weight that last name has means a lot, like has a lot more weight to other people than us. I think for us, it's just a last name. We, we wear it loud and proud. And we, Absolutely. We wear it loud and proud, but like, obviously you're gonna have the people out there yelling negative stuff at you, but we're already used to that. Like, it just gives us even more fire in us to work harder and prove ourselves. And it doesn't even matter about our last name. We have huge shoes to fill, of course, but you know we're here to create our own career and create our own legacy. They're comfortable in their own skin. I think they enjoyed or are enjoying me being their dad and uh, somebody that can give them some uh, life experience because I've been through it, uh, the ups and downs. Nice game, dude. Thanks. Good job out there. Good day. Way to pick it. Come get them. Vacuum. I told Eugenio that you're not going to need a vacuum at your place. I know. They're their own little beast, if you will, over here. They love. They love it.